Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to be doing my current favorites and fails. I have quite a lot of things I've been loving. When I was getting the box together where I put everything that I've been loving, I was thinking I have so many things that I found, but it's because I haven't done a favorite since the beginning of June, so it's almost about two months of favorites. I have so many products I think you guys are gonna love. I'm wearing a lot of them today, and just some really interesting products I think you guys are gonna get a kick out of, but they really work. I do have a couple fails that I will share at the end of the video, but quite a lot of products that are impressing me that I'm using all the time, and I think you guys would enjoy as well. So I will link everything I talk about today down below. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe, and let's go ahead and begin. So I want to start off with some brushes that I'm continuing to use and love so much. I did mention some of these in my June favorites, but I just have to give them another shout out. I've been loving these and so many of you guys have these and love them as well. They also have a sale going on and I think the last day is today, so I will put a link down below, but BK Beauty brushes have just blown me away. These are 20 to 30% off site-wide right now, which is huge. I think it's their second year anniversary. I'm pretty new to these brushes. I've only been using them for a few months now, and I can tell you that some of these have become staples in my routine. The best brush that I've found from them is the 101. I feel like everybody raves about it. It's just such a phenomenal brush for your cream products. So foundation, cream bronzer, cream blush, really anything cream, but foundation specifically just has such a unique shape. It's not too dense where it's slipping and sliding and moving your product. You can either stipple or you can buff. I've just really been impressed with this. I also really love the 106, which reminds me of a brush from the Makeup by Mario, I think Sephora collaboration. For this one, you can really buff or just go back and forth. Again, very good for all cream products. Just a smaller, different shape than the 101. I've been loving the 108. I use this to touch up a lot of the time, like right in my T-zone. You could also use this to highlight. You could use it for a light bronzer, but I typically use it to set my under eyes or touch up my under eyes. And then I've been loving this 208. This is a tiny angled brush. It is perfect for doing winged liner with eyeshadow or any gel pot liner you have. I've just been really impressed with the quality of these. I've washed them multiple times. They wash well. They are synthetic and they are just top, top quality. So they are having a sale. I think it ends today. I will leave the information down below, but if you've been wanting to pick up anything from BK Beauty, the entire site is 20 to 30% off, which I'm so excited about. So I'll link these down below, but I've just been highly, highly impressed with these. So there's a couple more tools that I've been really loving. You guys have been asking me because I've been using this sponge in my previous videos. This is the Stands Out Sponge. I did a sponsorship with them a few weeks back and I just have fallen in love with their sponge again. I originally tried this years ago when Tati talked about it. I think a lot of you were in my comments like, I bought it when Tati reviewed it. She reviewed it years ago. I bought a couple. It actually ended up in a favorites years ago and then somehow I lost it. I have so much stuff that I'm like, did I lose it in the movie? Like, I really don't know where it went. So they resent me some and asked me to try them out. I remember loving them, and then we did a sponsorship. This video is not sponsored. I just truly love them. But I just feel like this is such a beautiful sponge for any complexion products. Great for your foundation concealer. Really, really great for cream, bronzer, and blush. It's a foam texture, so you can really make it tiny, and then you can see it just goes back to its original form. You don't have to be careful if you're heavy-handed because, literally, it's not going to disrupt anything. It's just soft softer than the Beauty Blender. It's softer than most sponges, dry or wet. You don't have to wet it as well. I usually do, but I also will use it dry. So I wanted to mention it because it is truly a product that I've rediscovered and fallen in love with again. A lot of you have been asking me about it because I have been using it in some trying new makeup videos. But if you're looking for a new tool that can kind of do it all for you in terms of like cream, powders, you can use it dry or wet. I think you'd really enjoy this, so I'll link it down below. I've also been enjoying this Power Pocket Puff from Beauty Blender. Now this is something I owned years ago and I didn't really think anything of it and then I repurchased it when my friend Cheryl was really raving about it. This is great to set 
in areas where you have a lot of texture to also set your cream products. So if you have applied a cream contour bronzer and you wanna set it with powder, I've been loving using the Dior powder because it's so light. Something about this is just so soft. It's like a velvety feel, but it has like a gel inside and you can just really press into the skin without disrupting. I'm the type of person that struggles with cream contours or bronzers and I cannot just take a brush and swipe over them. It will literally just lift, patch, stick. I am just always struggling with that. This has been my go-to to really set down a cream bronzer. I just take that Dior powder and I just press with like a really light pressure. It doesn't disrupt, it doesn't lift. This is also great for touch-ups. So if you have this in your purse and you just wanna touch up around your pore area where you've gotten a little bit oily. So I've really been enjoying this as well, just kind of playing around with some new tools and sponges and finding a lot of favorites. Also quickly wanted to give a shout out to this Soul Body face and body makeup that I've been wearing and getting so many compliments from you guys on. This is the face and body makeup in medium 10. Originally I'd purchased this for my face and possibly to pull down on my chest. It is too deep for my face, so this definitely runs dark in my opinion. So it's too deep to use on my face, so I started using it on my chest and I have really enjoyed it. It just evens out the color on my chest, so I tend to just put it really on my chest area. I feel like self tan never really wants to get as dark there, so I like to just even it out. Of course I don't use this every day, but when I'm filming or if I'm going to you know some sort of event, I would definitely use it. It does dry down matte, so it's not super sticky. Now it does transfer a little bit on your clothes, but I haven't noticed like transferring on people when I hug them, and it does last all day. Of course if you're sweating, you might have a little bit of like movement, but I don't notice it just like dripping off and getting all over the place. So I've really been enjoying this. I do plan on possibly picking up a lighter shade to try for my face as well because I've heard good things about it and I've just really been enjoying it and it's really affordable as well. I have a couple complexion products I wanted to touch on, and one of them is an older product that I've rediscovered. This is also from ColourPop. This is the Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. I have the shade Medium 12W. I like to mix this in with my NARS foundation. Today I'm actually throwing it back and wearing the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I wore it yesterday because we went to like an outdoor patio sort of concert thing, and it was really, really hot, and I was like, I don't want my makeup slipping off. So the Double Wear is always coming in clutch when you want something that's gonna last all day. But I recently, in a lot of my videos, and just in general, have been mixing this in with really any matte foundation. I really tend to like to mix the best of both worlds. This gives me a little bit more hydration, especially on the perimeter of my face. Gives me a little bit more of that fresh look, but the NARS really gives me the smoothing and that lockdown feeling. Now, I can wear this alone as well. I would say it's a good light medium coverage. You can build it to medium, but I tend to just mix it. That's just my preference. So if you tend to enjoy Enjoy the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop or the NARS Radiant Tinted Moisturizer, which are some of my favorites. This may be a good option for you because it wears quite well, it mixes beautifully, it has just enough coverage that you can wear it alone or just use it to add a little bit of hydration into matte foundations and I've really been enjoying it. Also, no surprise that I am loving the Lancome Tint Isole Concealer. I have used this in multiple trying to make it videos, honestly because there hasn't been any new concealers. So whenever I'm doing a full face of makeup, I've been using this to keep testing it out and I have my full thoughts now. This is such a nice concealer. I love the original foundation, so I was kind of anticipating liking this. What I like about this is it's a thin texture, but it has a good medium buildable coverage. A little goes a long way and it seems to be very smoothing and hydrating. It's not dry. It doesn't overly crease. I feel like every concealer creases, but once you set it down, it just wears beautifully. It's not heavy, sticky, tacky. It's just a nice, thin formula. It does have a large doe foot, and I have the shade Buff Neutral, so this is what the shade looks like. It's not the most brightening shade, but they did send me two, and this was the one that I chose. I honestly don't use much. I do like a little bit right here, and then a little bit right here. I don't have to cake this on to get the coverage. I don't find it drying. I feel like mature skin would love this. Dry skin, combo skin, so it's a hit for me. Now I have a powder that I wanted to give a shout out to. When I originally tried it, I was doing a trying new makeup, and when you do that, sometimes, especially with complexion products, it's very hard to tell. Let's say if you try a foundation that doesn't work for you, and then you try a powder, you really can't tell if you like the powder. So I've continued to use this, and I have to say it's becoming a top pick for me. This is the one size, turn up the base versus 
versatile foundation powder. I have the shade Light 3 Neutral, packaging super cute, and I have to say one size I believe really excels in their complexion products. The loose powder is great, this is great, and I'm excited to try the concealer. I already ordered it. This is such a nice powder, I would say, to set the rest of your face, even your T-zone, or touch up. So I use this to touch up under my eyes with that BK Beauty brush, or I can use it under my contour if I feel like I've dragged it down a little bit too much. The shade is a little bit dark for me to set my under eyes if I don't have like a fresh tan on, but I like this powder so much that I feel like I would probably pick up a lighter shade so that I am able to do that. It's very smoothing, lightweight, it's not dry. I recently tried the Artist Couture smoothing powder and or blurring powder and it was not blurring. I actually felt like it caked up around my pores. This one does not do that. I've just been really impressed with this. So I've just found myself reaching for this so much on camera and off camera. It's really become a favorite and I may pick up a lighter shade. Next, I have two skincare products that blew me away immediately. The first time I used them and I have continued to use them and just been wowed, so much so that I wanted to mention them today. Now, I've only had these for about a week, so keep that in mind. I've used this moisturizer every single day. So, Kapari sent me a package. They've sent me some other things. They usually have more like coconut oil or just like body scrubs, stuff like that, but they actually came out with this Peptide Glow Hydrating Moisturizer. So first of all, I love the packaging. I thought it was really cute, very, you know, summer, fun-like. A huge thing for me is how does it smell? If it's going to be overly, like, floral fragranced or something that really turns me off, I just won't even try it. But this one has a, I would say, like, a light, fresh smell with a little bit of, like, a coconut in there. This is very interesting because it has a slip very similar to the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, but I would say it's lighter and texture. Texture. It wears beautifully under makeup, but gives you a deep hydration. The texture is like a mixture of the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream with a gel moisturizer. It has that really nice slip to it, not silicone, but just like that really nice, I don't know, like the Dewy Skin Cream from Tatcha, that's what I think of. It gives you intense hydration. It's soothing to the skin. It's like it coats your skin with this nice hydration. I've not broken out. It doesn't irritate me. I was wowed. The first time I used this, I was like, woo, that feels good. You know when you just try something, you're like, oh my gosh, it just feels incredible. And then I just kept using it and using it and using it. And I have fallen in love with it. It is just so hydrating, but thin. Usually like my Freck moisturizer is very hydrating. It's a little bit more of a thicker consistency consistency. This one is not. It's like gel, but soft and slick. Something about this I'm just in love with. I really haven't seen anybody talk about it, but it was one of those. Usually with skincare, I'm very wary, but I opened the package and sort of looked at the packaging and smelled the products, and I was like, you know what? Let me try those, and I fell in love. So with this, there's also this product, which is the California Glow Enzyme Scrub. Again, the packaging on these probably was one of the main things that made me try them. Also, the scents on them. I don't really exfoliate a ton in the shower. I use my Foreo a lot, or I've just felt like as I've gotten older, less is more. So I try to just be really easy with my skin. But this really intrigued me because it says it's an enzyme scrub. So when I opened it up, it has like a really nice whipped texture. There's not like chunky beads or anything like that in there. This one smells like fresh creamsicle or something like that. It smells incredible. So the texture on it is very hydrating and whipped, but when you rub it in, you get like a light exfoliation, and then if you wanna press harder, it's very, very fine, almost like granules of sugar kind of scrub. And this leaves your skin so hydrated. It's almost like if you've ever used a body scrub and you wash it off and you feel like your skin has a nice hydration to it. Not like a thick oil, but some sort of like moisturizer left behind. I'm assuming because this has like coconut water, maybe coconut oil in it, I would have to look at the ingredients. This is the most hydrating facial scrub I've ever used. So typically when I use a face exfoliator or sometimes even face washes, I feel like my skin is very tight. It's clean, but it's very tight and dry. This one has some sort of like hydration left behind. So if you're sensitive to coconut, I would check the ingredients. I have acne prone skin, hormonal acne 
acne prone skin and I've been using this. I've used it three times now. I've used the moisturizer, I think six. So I've had no breakouts, like nothing at all. Not even blackheads, clogged pores, nothing. These have just really wowed me. They're brand new, but something about this just makes your face feel like you put moisturizer on. So you get the dead skin off, but then you have like, your face is moisturized. I don't know. Something about these just really blew me away. I'm so excited to keep trying them. Immediately this baby was in my shower and she did not leave. And this has been top drawer again for me as well. But I was just really impressed with these. I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy these. So next I want to talk about palettes and I have a few that I really just cannot stop using. I'm so impressed with. I'm still loving these matte blush palettes from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is probably my favorite release that she's come out with. This and something else I'm going to mention shortly. These palettes are so pigmented, so smooth, easy to blend, and they really give it to you if you love a punchy blush like me. I tend to really like just brighter blushes, whether it's pink, orange, red. I want something that's going to make me look alive. Give me that baby doll cheek look and these do it for me. I did see they're available at Ulta now, which is super exciting because I know ordering on different websites can be stressful. Like I know for myself recently, I've made a bunch of orders to sort of indie brands and it's a little bit confusing if your package doesn't arrive, then you have to follow up with the brand. And I'm trying to track packages from like five different places. Whereas if you make an order from Ulta or Sephora, you can just add it to cart. I think that's just just kind of how everyone is the ease of use is there so it's just much more accessible and you can use your points so I'll link these down below but there's two different colorways this is the warm toned palette this one is beautiful if you love that sunburnt look if you want oranges and the reds there is a little bit of you know the muted colors in here but really this is going to give you that sunburnt sun-kissed just punchy look I think these are so gorgeous and I do tend to reach for I would say the warm tone more today I did use the cool toned one. This one is just baby doll cheeks in a palette. These are so vibrant and they blend beautifully. They don't stick down. They don't dust off. They're just stunning. The formula is beautiful on these. If you love blush looks like I do. The really punchy blushes that a lot of people think look, you know, scary in the pan, but really give you that baby doll flush. You would absolutely love these. Every time I use them, they're easy. They blend on beautifully. They give me that punchy cheek I'm looking for. I just really love these. Now, in terms of eyeshadow palettes, I've been using this a lot and I've just really been enjoying it. This is the Scott Barnes Snatural Palette. So I have been wearing this and getting so many compliments from you guys. I think it's because I've been doing the smoky lower lash line, which is a little bit different for me. Now, I didn't use this today. I literally forgot. I had a box of stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm going to use all of these favorites today, and then for some reason, I started using my Makeup by Mario Mattes palette, and then I used a little bit of the Patrick Ta glitter on the lid. I love those palettes as well, but this one is interesting because you get the best of both worlds. You can really go cool tone down here, or you can keep it bronzy gold tones, so it's warm and cool. The shimmers are gorgeous in here. Very, very thin texture, almost have a little bit of sparkle in them. Not chunky at all. They're just such a unique texture in here. These ones really stand out to me. You can use them with a brush, you can use them with your finger, and they just give you almost like that wet sort of gunmetal look on the eyes. This palette is also very deep, meaning that anybody could use this. There's a ton of deep shades to choose from, but there's also some light ones for, you know, fair skin tones, light skin tones to use in their crease so I just really have been enjoying this. The mattes in here are very pigmented. They have a lot of depth so I would use a light hand and build them up. They can stick down a little bit if you get a little bit too much on your brush and then you kind of press it on your eye and try to blend it out. I would use a lighter hand, tap your brush off, make sure you set your eye base but I really have been enjoying it. I've been able to make a ton of just neutral smoky looks and every single one has come out beautifully. I think the shimmers really just pop in this and also the fact that you can really do a cool toned look if you want to or you can take it warm. It's the best of both worlds. I just think it's a beautiful palette. Next, I have one cream blush formula that has really wowed me, and every time I use them, they're just so effortless and gorgeous. I don't think you'll be surprised to know that I am loving the M Cosmetics blush sticks. Specifically, the shade Passion is so gorgeous. Every time I wear it, it just livens up my face. It looks crazy in the tube, and it is very pigmented. I mean, that's one swipe. But I've used this in multiple videos, and it just gives me that really sunburnt 
look. These go beautifully over powder if you use a sponge. That is always my recommendation. I would never just, you know, put a stick product on my face, a cream product. Most of the time it will patch off that way. So if you're trying it that way and you're like, oh, it's patching, definitely try to put the product on the back of your hand, take a sponge, a wet sponge typically, and then press it into your skin with very light pressure, build it up. This is gorgeous. If you love the golden hour sun-kissed look, this is gorgeous and I feel like any skin tone can wear that color. And then my more safe color would be lychee. This one is just like a coral peachy pink. I tend to prefer passion though because I'm, you know, I'm that bitch. I like to be flushed. Lychee is like that, you know, soft, you know, cute little blush moment. But I used this the other day and then I put passion on top to punch it up. You can mix and match them. They have like three deeper shades and then three lighter shades. So I feel like they really did a good job at being inclusive because they have really, really light, you know, pinks and just soft peachy colors that I feel like fair, light, medium skin tone can use. And then they have some deeper ones, like the Passion is one of the deeper ones. They also have more of like a berry tone, a rose tone. So everybody can use these and find colors that work for them. I have to say M Cosmetics stays impressing me. Most of their products I've been very, very impressed by. And this is a great release. I think it's gorgeous for summer and it's a super easy formula to use. So now let's talk lips, and then I wanna get into some kind of fun favorites that I have that I usually probably wouldn't mention, and then a couple fails. So quickly wanted to give a shout out. You guys already know, but these are phenomenal. The Too Faced Hangover Pillow Bombs. I raved about the original, love it so much, still have it by my bedside, and then they sent me their new flavors. They had like banana, I think this one is mango, watermelon, you guys, these are just so nice for around the house, before bed. You can just use these anytime your lips are dry. I would say this is more of a treatment. It does have a little bit of a tint to it, so I tend to use like the watermelon and the mango kiss during the day, and then the clear one at night. These just coat your lips and make them so hydrated. I almost feel like they put a barrier on your lips so they just stay nice and hydrated and soft. They're not sticky or goopy, and the scents are spot on. Watermelon is probably my favorite. I'm gonna swatch them for you just because there is a small tint to them. So if you wanna wear them during the day and you just want a little bit of color, I would go for one of the scented ones. So I'd say my two favorites are Watermelon and the Mango Kiss. So here's the Mango. The Mango one is a little bit more sheer. It's kind of like a peachy color with a little bit of a golden hue. And then Watermelon is probably the most pigmented one and it smells incredible. I mean, think of like Glow Recipe Watermelon. That's what it smells like. Like these I've been wearing a lot before I do my makeup. So when you see me filming, I either grab for my Lawless Forget the Filler Gloss or I'll grab for these. The Lawless is way more shiny, so it's more of a gloss. It feels really nice on the lips, keeps them hydrated, but it gives you that like high shine. These are a bomb, so they really coat your lips and just keep the moisture in. They feel incredible, they smell incredible, there's no funky taste to them. I'm just really a fan of these. I've got these all over the house. I got my banana one downstairs, so anytime my lips are feeling dry I just grab it out of the drawer and apply it and it just feels so comfortable I think their original was such a hit that they decided to expand in some different scents which I thought was a really good idea just because if maybe the original didn't appeal to you and you didn't know really what it smelled like but you're a huge watermelon fan you could grab this one or the banana one smells like Laffy Taffy I love just how I grab these throw them on and go Another lip product that I've been loving, and I'm kind of shocked because I typically don't wear liquid lipsticks, like matte liquid lipsticks anymore, but this formula stands out to me. I started off with one shade and really enjoyed it, so I ordered a couple more shades. Now, the shades I have are all very similar, but I love all of them, and I might pick up a couple more. This is the Scott Barnes Matte Liquid Lipsticks. So the packaging is not my favorite. It doesn't feel cheap or anything like that, but the gold is just not really like my favorite, but the formula on these and the color colors are gorgeous. So you can see how close these shades are. I started out with the shade Strut, and then I got Keep It Coral, and then I picked up the Love Story. They're all very similar, you know, pinky nudes for my skin tone, but these wear beautifully. They are matte, but they're not dry down like Anastasia Beverly Hills, your lips are cracking matte. They wear nicely. When I touch them, there's a little bit of transfer, so it's almost like a hybrid. I would say it looks matte, and it feels 
feels comfortable, it's not sticky, but if you drink, you can get a little bit of transfer on your glass. For me, I personally would rather have that than the dry, cracked ring inside my mouth or gunking up. If you like the matte liquid lipstick look and the way that it lasts for a long time, but you can't stand the dry cracking, try this formula. They're not 100% transfer proof, but they're not a velvet liquid lipstick in the sense that they're coming off on everything. They're sort of like right in between, and I really like the formula. They wear beautifully, and they just have beautiful colors. I may even go back and get a few more shades because I've been quite impressed just with how much I like the colors and the formula. I also have to give a quick shout out to the lip oils from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This formula really is incredible. It's not sticky, it's not super thin where it's sliding all over. The colors are gorgeous and these are high shine. I love these. I did a first impressions on them and you guys saw my reaction. Um, I said they were like DSLs, baby. They give you those DSLs if you're looking for that. My favorite shades are Rose Drip and Ruby Drip. I just like that punchy, sort of like popsicle lip look. So I'm gonna use Rose Drip, why not? They are just so comfortable and they don't slip and slide. I have an issue with lip oils. I think why I don't wear them a lot is because they migrate and get all over my face. These are just thick enough that they sit right where you put them. Oh my gosh, they feel incredible and they just give you high shine. I love the color she chose. I love the packaging and I just love the formula. I think she really knocked it out of the park. I really was expecting to be like, yeah, it's a lip oil, but I really, really love these. I mean, these are top tier. These are like up there with my Lawless and my Too Faced, but these are more just for the look. If you want that high shine, I'm going to put a little bit of ruby drip on because, you know, if you want that high, high shine, but you don't want something that is so thin that it's slipping and sliding all over your face, these are the lip oils to try. I love the big daddy, you know, the big daddy doe foot, as we call it, and it just gives you that gorgeous, super, super wet, shiny lip look. They're great for really just like an everyday throw on and go or a topper like I just used. I think the colors are gorgeous. I just love everything about these. I think she knocks it out of the park with this formula. I have one perfume I want to tell you guys about, and this was actually recommended to me by one of you guys, and I picked it up because I looked it up and the notes just really seemed like something I would love. This is actually from Rebel Scents. I've never purchased from them, but they do sell high-end fragrances, and then they also have like their in-house fragrances, which is one of these. This is called Drippin' Gold, and I read the notes and immediately was like, ooh, that smells good, and I was not disappointed. Oh my God. Okay, let me look up the notes for this. They describe this as a fruity gourmand. It says the top notes are bergamot and mandarin, heart notes, coconut, gardenia, and the base is vanilla and musk. It smells freaking incredible. It reminds me of one of the KKW hearts, but I think I like this one even more. I definitely smell that musk, I smell the coconut, but I also do smell some of that bergamot, the vanilla, it's not floral at all in my opinion. It is very musky, fruity gourmand. It just smells absolutely incredible. I don't know what else to say other than I've been bathing in this. If you liked like vanilla bourbon that I mentioned um, from Mix Bar, or you like the really gourmand, sweet, sultry, just like almost like bakery type scents, you would definitely like this. It just smells delicious. It smells a little bit more sexy too. It's not mature at all. It just has more depth to it. It's sort of hard to tell like what's in it other than delicious goodness. And I read the reviews and I was like sold. So I'm almost curious to try a little bit more fragrance from them. They have, I wanna say like six or seven of their actual fragrances, but I read the notes and I was kinda like, eh, this one, I immediately, I read the notes and I knew I would love it. And when I got it, I was blown away. Speaking of products that smell incredible, I originally mentioned this months ago on my channel and so many of you guys purchased it and loved it. I'm almost out of it, so I did buy a backup. This is an interesting product. You're probably gonna be like, what? This is called the Panty Cakes Personal Care Enhancer. So you're like, what is that? Essentially, this is a super hydrating elixir that you can put down there. So you're not gonna put it up there, if you know what I'm saying. You're gonna put it like on your thighs, your pubic area. I put it even like on my armpit area because I get dry skin. It's really good for ingrown hairs. It's just basically like a coconut oil based, super moisturizing, super delicious smelling 
moisturizer. So the only thing I will say is it can get kind of hardened because it is coconut oil based, but it has a little dropper and you drop it out on the back of your hand. This is what it looks like. And you rub it in and it is deeply hydrating, but what makes this special is the scent. It smells like a bakery. It just makes me feel so fresh, I guess sexy. It's one of those things that I like to put like on my thighs, on my bikini area. If you're gonna get sexy with your significant other, that's why they call it panty cakes. It just gives you this like aroma that lasts all day. So literally all day. Like if you put it on in the morning throughout the day, I can just get like whiffs of it, especially if you put it, you know, like around your booby area, like wherever you want to put it. You could slather this all over your legs, your entire body. You could mix it in with your favorite lotion. It's just deeply hydrating without being sticky and the smell is intoxicating and it lingers. It's just one of those self-care items that makes me feel sexy. It hydrates my skin, helps with my ingrown hairs or irritation from shaving. Smells incredible. I like to use it when I'm getting intimate with Ian. So I know it's a little bit funky, you know, the panty cakes, but I'm telling you, I will link it down below, read the reviews. You guys will be like, ooh, and then you'll add it to cart. It really is just a staple in my self-care routine, and I believe it's $15. So if you use it every day, of course, you're gonna go through it a little bit more, but I just use it, you know, when I'm in the mood. I have one more favorite before we get into the fails, and I have to say, you guys are probably gonna laugh, and I guarantee nobody has shown you this on your subscription feed, but it works. So I originally saw this on TikTok, and I was like, no way, that's so gimmicky. And then I was reordering my panty cakes oil from Urban Outfitters, and as I do, I was scrolling and like, what's new, what are people loving, and I saw this product, and it had amazing reviews, and I was like, oh my god, this actually works. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna add it to cart, we'll see, I still was a little skeptical, and you guys, it does work. I am so in shock, but actually laughing at how much I love this product. So this is called the Scruffy, okay? And you may be saying, what the fuck is that? This is a leg shaver that basically shaves your legs like in one go. So I am the queen of like, how can I get my self-care done quickly? I feel like keeping up with my hair, my Botox, my self-tan, my nails, like it's a full-time job. And I'm like, why can't I just naturally be like tan with gorgeous blonde hair, perfect nails and pedicured feet? Like I like to look nice, but I don't wanna spend all the time. Ian actually died when he opened this. He goes, what the hell is that? So essentially you just put the razors on. It comes with the razors and then it comes with this little contraption. And it just literally goes up your leg and shaves your entire, like all around your leg in one go. So it saves me time. And for me, I'm like all about that. So I'm like, I can just go zoop, zoop, like a couple times my legs are shaved and I'm out the door. If you're someone like me who is like, oh, like you just dread shaving your legs and doing the whole bit. It just kind of fits wherever your leg is, like however thick your leg is. Cause I was thinking like, how's it going to go on my calf? And then also like my thigh. So you just kind of bend it and it just like glides up. You use light pressure and it works. It's quick. This is very innovative and this is genius. I mean, I feel like as women or men, we're trying to get like looking good as easy and fast as possible, right? We want something that's gonna get us there quickly and this actually works. I'm literally dying at me holding this up. I'm gonna put a video that I saw on TikTok of how it actually works so you can see, but the only thing I will say is be careful around your knee area because you wanna use a very light pressure. Um, otherwise, obviously like your knee area is bony and I feel like that's the area you could get cut. I haven't had any issues with it, but I'm telling you, I'm much more motivated now to shave my legs because it's it's literally like a 30 second process and I am that lazy if you're wondering like a hundred percent so I would recommend this for those of you that just like dread shaving your legs and you're just like oh my god I can't take the time this saves time I know it's funny but it actually works the only thing I'm unclear of and I'm going to have to look it up is if you have to buy refill cartridges from the actual brand or if you can use any razor that you have. So if you have like Gillette razors, can you use that? I am all about being put together and feeling fresh and clean and groomed 
but also using the least amount of energy possible and time. Anybody else with me? Because that's me. If it can save me time and effort, I'm there and this does that. It's hilarious to me that I love it, but it works and I think it's a great invention. So now that we've gotten through all of my favorites, I feel like I had so many. I want to get to the flops. Now I only have a couple, but they were pretty rough flops. The first one will be no surprise. This Morphe Glow Stunner Hydrating Tinted Moisturizer was one of the worst complexion products I've tried in a long time. This oxidized, it chunked up, it had very, very minimal coverage, which it does say it is sheer, but there was no building at all, like none. I would say I can get more building from the Glossier Skin Tint than this. When you built it up, it patched off and chunked off. It just just absolutely looked horrible on my skin. I couldn't even make it work. Like it's not even one that I could add a powder on and make it work. I really just didn't like it at all. I didn't like the feel of it. I felt like I looked greasy and orange. It accentuated my texture and it just Really, I felt like it took like 10 minutes to apply and then it still looked bad. So it's one of those that you're gonna have to spend a ton of time applying. Now I will say I saw a model on the Morphe Instagram applying this and she looked gorgeous, but I will say her skin literally looked perfect before. I couldn't even tell that she had this on. So it was almost like, yeah, if you have even perfect skin and you just want, I guess, like a little bit of like a glow, but this has like zero coverage. And for me, just the streakiness, the oxidization, like everything about it, I just disliked it. It was like really not working with my skin. If you didn't see my trying new makeup, you're probably like, what? Well, watch my trying new makeup and see how this applied. It's just not a favorite of mine and it's something that I will never use again. And the other fail for me is a mascara. Now I only have the mini sample size, but every time I've used this, it did absolutely nothing for my lashes. And I've tried now, I think, five times and I've just like had it. I'm like, okay, after five times, there's so many other mascaras that I love. This is one of those that just really does nothing. It almost makes my lashes look spiky and clumped together, but I get no volume, very minimal length. And I'm surprised because this is a tubing mascara. So this is the Velour Pretty Big Deal Peptide and Tubing Mascara. I really thought I would enjoy this because it does have a thicker wand. I do like more, you know, thick wands. I like more voluminous wands, the ones that really give you the volume. But this is sort of in the middle. It's curved and I thought, okay, it'll give me a nice curl. And because it's a tubing mascara, it'll really coat my lashes and make them look plump and voluminous. And it did nothing. And it's one of those that you have to dip in, seriously, like five or six times just to get your lashes coated. It just didn't curl my lashes, didn't make them voluminous, didn't make them long or lengthen them. The effect was essentially like I took a black gel and just put it on my lashes, but it did nothing in terms of making my lashes pop. And I was a little bit surprised just because of the tubing aspect. I really thought that it was going to make them thicker and longer. It really was a disappointment for me. And for me, I'm just not gonna keep trying it because after five or six times, I'm like, I'm done with this. It's not doing anything for my lashes. And I would not recommend that you pick this up. All right, guys, so it is everything for my current favorites and fails. I have a lot of things that I'm loving. I hope you guys enjoyed the array of products. Maybe there's some products you were wanting to check out and wanted to see my thoughts on. So I will leave all of them linked Link down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you're loving. What kind of makeup products are you into or what product have you tried recently that just really wowed you that maybe I need to check out? So definitely leave that in the comments down below. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.